Hello and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. This is episode number 33 of my Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox series. Before we get started, let me give you a background on this image. I did some basic editing on this image in Lightroom and Photoshop, and then I sent it from Photoshop into uh, Topaz Studio 2, and now we're going to do our creative editing on it. Now, this is what the original image looks like. And eventually, hopefully, it'll look something like this when we're done. I had a lot of fun with this one. I really enjoy this image. I love this uh, this flower. I don't know what the name of this flower is, but it's an, it's an early blooming flower. And I love the way the petals are all entangled. And I like to call this image entangled. But let me show you how I made it. Let me go ahead and shut all these layers off so we can get back to the starting point of this image. Now on this particular flower image today, I used three different textures and two HSL color tuning filters on it. It was a very simple edit to do, but I was really happy with my final results. So here's my first texture. Okay, so it looks like this. And then I uh, did some HSL color tuning on it, and I basically just got rid of the color in the background. I thought that background color was kind of distracting. I didn't like all that green in there, so I thought... I'm going to simplify this image and get rid of that color. And then I thought, well, let's see what another texture would look like. And I came up with this texture here. Now, all these textures you will find inside of uh, Topaz Studio 2. I think these are the ones that come with Topaz Studio 2. And this particular texture is called Cosmic Soup. Isn't that a cool name, Cosmic Soup? But to me, this is where it really started to uh, take off for me when I added this texture to it after experimenting for a while with different textures. All right, and then I added another texture, and this particular texture is just basically this border here. Now, I use this texture a lot, and I just really love the way the uh, the edges are on it, and I think it really does a really nice job, so I really like it. And lastly, one more HSL color tuning filter, and I basically just worked on the color a little bit. I just altered the color slightly on the flower just to give it a little more contrast and interest. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and delete all these filters and we'll start from scratch. Let's go ahead and add our first uh, filter, come up to add filter, and it's gonna be a texture filter found under stylistic. We'll open that up and, well, there's Cosmic Soup, but we don't wanna start out with that one yet. We're gonna start out with one called Grand Tour. So I'm just gonna type the name of that in the search engine here, Grand Tour. And I believe it'll be this guy right here. Yeah, so let's click on that. And what I did was uh, I changed the, uh, the blend mode from normal to overlay. So we'll see what that does. Yeah, overlay. And then I increased the opacity up to around 80%, somewhere in there. And so far, so good. Now, we have more controls inside of this filter here. And this is one of the things I really love about Topaz Studio, too. They give you a lot to work with when you're working with textures and things like that. This is a powerful filter. I don't really know of anything else in the market that quite comes close to this uh, particular uh, filter. Anyway, we're going to work with the brightness. And I'm going to lighten this uh, up just a little wee bit. Now, when I adjust the brightness, it's only adjusting the brightness of the texture. And of course, wherever that blend mode is set at, it's going to interact differently according to how I adjust this brightness here. And then the other thing was, I didn't want to add any extra saturation to this image, you know, because there's color in this uh, particular texture. There's a lot of yellow in it. So I just basically want to drain that color out of it. So I just took the saturation and peeled it the whole way back. And I like the way it's going so far, and I like even the texture on the flower itself. A lot of times I'll take textures off flowers, but in this case, I don't think it hurts it, and I like that little bit of grunginess it adds to it. I think it really adds to the artistic quality of the image. The next thing I felt I needed to do was, I didn't like some of the color back here in the background. So there's some like bluish grays in here and there's some green here from uh, some leaves or something or some stems of another flower. And a lot of this green back here, I didn't like it. So I thought the simplest way to get that problem taken care of is let's just get rid of the color in the background altogether. To get rid of the color, I used an HSL color tuning filter. Uh, which is right here. Now, I could have used uh, the basic adjustment and 
There's a saturation adjustment here too. I could have used that. In fact, let's go ahead and use it. I could have went either way with that. Any, you know, there's more than one way of doing things in Photoshop, Topaz Studio 2, Luminar, all these programs. You can do things a myriad of different ways and achieve the exact same result. So I use HSL color tuning. This time, let me use the basic adjustment. I can do the same thing. All I did was took the saturation and shut it off. And now I have a black and white image, but I don't want my flower to be black and white. So I got to add color back to it. So simply all I need to do is come up to the basic adjustment, click on the layer mask, and then uh, come down to the basic adjustment down here. See the white swatch here, meaning everything is being revealed. In other words, I removed color, right? So we see the fact that the color is removed. Now what I need to do is get a black brush and with black transparency. Now this transparency slider, you can slide it and get any various shade of gray through here from black a whole way up to white. I want black because I want to totally get my color back on the flower by painting black paint over the flower. Now I'm going to make my radius a little bit smaller and uh, my softness is around 50. That's good. And I have edge wear on, which is going to be nice. And now I'll just simply paint on this flower here and I'll take your time. I'm going to do it fast. So I'm sure I'm going to mess up and miss some spots here. But take your time and get it right. But see that I'm just painting that back in. I'm going to make my radius a little bit smaller because I want to get up in these little areas in here. But that edge of wear is going to really help you. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to look believable. Okay, now I'm going to make my brush a little bit larger now. Here's a leaf back here. I'm going to paint that in. This whole area in here can all be painted in, I believe. I can always go back to the opposite color of white if I mess up in an area here. But let me go ahead and just paint here. Try to do this as quick as I possibly can. And make little noises. That always helps. <laughs> I used to watch a lot of Bob Ross. He's my hero. And he would always say that, you know, make little noises. Do little, uh, you know. Enjoy yourself when you're doing art. That's the important thing. If you're not enjoying yourself, then why are you even doing it, right? So have fun with it, for crying out loud. That's why I call my channel The Joy of Editing with David Kelly, because I honestly find editing a great joy. Uh, sometimes doing tutorials can be a little challenging, especially when you're talking and painting all at the same time. But this is fun, and I just want to share all the stuff I know and have learned through the years with all my viewers and subscribers. I really appreciate all you guys. It's exciting for me every time you guys comment and like and share. It's really a great thing. And I really appreciate it. And I appreciate each and every one of you. So I think I'm good. Did I, did I get that? Yeah, I guess I did. There wasn't much color in that leaf back there. Oh, I missed the little spot right here. I'll make my uh, brush a little smaller. And like that. Now you can use a shortcut of a left and right bracket key to make your brush larger and smaller too. So just wanted to point that out. Okay, so I think I'm good. If I miss a spot somewhere, forgive me guys. I'm, again, it's a tutorial. I'm going kind of fast, but there we go. I think, oh, the stem. Somebody forgot to tell me. Why didn't you tell me? I forgot the stem. We've got to have the stem in color. It's not going to look right if everything else is black and white or in color on the flower and the background's black and white we got to have the stem in color so there it is and so far so good now what did i do next oh yes now i remember another texture so we'll come up to add filter let's grab another texture this time we are going to use the cosmic soup i love cosmic soup when i first saw cosmic soup and i'll click on it so you can see it i thought this would never work for anything, but I find I use this. I hate to say it on a lot of different images. I manipulate it and work with it in different ways, and uh, but it can be really effective. So what did I do here? I can't remember here because it looks so crazy on the screen right now. Okay, yeah, I changed the uh, blend mode from normal to soft light. These blend modes are your friends when you're working with texture. So there's soft light. Already you can see it's looking really cool. The next thing I did was made my image smaller. And I'll show you why. Because I'm going to edit the uh, or transform this texture. But let me adjust the opacity slider back just a little bit first. Yeah, right there. And then I click this edit right here. See where it says edit? Now with this edit, you can transform your texture. And this is a really great feature of uh, Topaz Studio 2. Now, 
You can texture in Luminar, and they finally added this uh, transform feature to it. It's not quite as elaborate as Topaz Studio 2, I'll be honest with you. When I'm going to do texturing, I'm generally going to use uh, Topaz Studio 2 to do texturing. Let me see. I kind of changed the angle here because what I was doing was I was trying to find... Let's see. I made this a lot bigger, too. Like so. Because I, to me, it looks like a, you know, like a star field back here, some cosmic debris, you know? Sounds like a Frank Zappa song or something like that. Uh, wasn't there a song like that, Cosmic Debris? I may be wrong on that, but correct me if I am. I'll just feel bad if you correct me, though, but that's okay. I, I need to be corrected. So basically what I'm trying to do is so, see some of these lines here. I'm trying to match the angle of the actual flower itself. Okay. And so just play around with it and get it looking, you know, kind of like it's fitting into the image, okay? And I love texturing. I think texturing is so much fun. But if you come to the edge of these uh, of the box here, your, uh, your cursor turns into that little curve there, and that lets you ac actually adjust the angle of it. And I think maybe, yeah, right around there. I think that looks good. If you're happy with it, what you have to do then is just click Edit here again, and there you go. But isn't that cool? I'll make it a little bit larger now. But so far, so good. Was there anything else I did to it? Yes. I worked with some of the uh, tools here. For instance, uh, I left the brightness where it was, but the detail. And this is a great uh, slider here. So you can bring the detail up or pull the detail back. And basically what I did was I just pulled the detail back a little bit, like to a minus 7. And then the saturation, I shut the saturation off. See, there's set, there is a color in that uh, texture there, as you can see it right there. I don't want that color in there, so I just pulled the saturation off. And the, this is really nice that you have saturation here because whenever you use a blend mode here, like I could have used the luminosity blend mode, but it wouldn't be the right blend mode for the texture. But the fact that I have this saturation here, if I don't want the color from the texture interfering with the image, I can simply pull the saturation off. Now, to me, that is a big, big plus for uh, Topaz Studio 2's texture filter. Okay, so I love that. And the other thing I did was I took the color strength. You can add your own color in. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this. Oh, I'm pulling the wrong slider i'm pulling the saturation again i meant to pull the color strength and you'll do that too so let me go ahead and leave my mistakes in this color strength what it does is it lets you add your own color into it so i pulled my color strength up to around 50 and basically what i was trying to do here was just add a little bit of a blue tint to the image not much but just a little bit so what I did was I took this color slider and it basically goes through the different tints here. And I took it over to the blue tints and that was right around, what was it, 63. But you see how it's adding that little bit of a blue tint. Now I can take this color strength and keep dragging it to the right and add more or less in. But I settled on right around 50. It kind of looks like a gray background, but it's not. There's a slight hint of blue in there. So there we are so far, and I'm really happy with it. At this point, I was thinking, I think it needs a border. Or actually, I was asking myself, what does it need next, Dave? And I said, maybe a border. So that's what we're going to do next. And for that border, we'll come up to Add Filter and go one last time to Texture. And I know the name of the texture, and it is called Sun Saturation. If I can spell it right. Yep, right there it is, sun saturation. And what I like about this uh, particular texture are these lines on the edges, and they're really nice. So what we're going to do is change the blend mode from normal to multiply. And multiply is right here. And then I pulled the opacity up a little bit. You know, you could take it the whole way up if you wanted to. It's a little too strong. There's some warm tones in there. You can see there, there on the edges. And you may like that. And I kind of liked it a little bit. I thought it was a little too strong. But I ended up playing with that. And I'll show you that in a second here. But first, I'm going to get the opacity right where I want it. And I was right around 66. Now, let's go with 67. That's good. And that little bit of brown in there looks kind of okay. But it kind of draws my eye. So I thought, 
The best way of getting rid of that is coming down to these great slider adjustments down here. And again, I'm going to go with the saturation and take it the whole way off to the left. And I totally drained the color out of it. And at that point, I thought, that's it. That really looks great. So let me show you. Here's before that uh, border. And here's after. But I think it really helps it out. It darkens the edges up a little bit and draws our attention into the the flower itself. And there was one last thing I need to do, and that's work with the color on the flower. And to do that this time for sure, I do need a HSL color tuning filter. So let's come up to add filter and grab that HSL color tuning filter. And what I need to do is I want to darken the greens a little bit and I want to alter the hue and maybe darken the yellow a little bit. Okay, so let me start out with the green. I'm just going to click this green swatch right here. And I'm going to go to the lightness, and I'm going to pull that lightness to the left to darken up the greens. See how it's only targeting green when I pull that to the left? And what I did was I went to like a minus 29, and I felt that was the right spot right there. Just darkened it up just a tiny wee bit. And then I went to the yellows. And on the yellows, I adjusted the U. And let me see, which way did I go? Yeah, to the left. I went to around 22. I just wanted to warm them up just a little bit more. 22. Already I like that. And then the saturation. I just brought it up a little bit. Don't want to go too much. But I only went up to around an 8. I might go up to about a 10. Maybe a little higher this time. I think I might go around 15 this time. I feel like 15. I feel like a little more saturation in yellow. Later on, I'll probably say, no, I don't like that. But no, I'm, I'm sticking with it. I think I'm happy. And then lightness. I pulled the lightness back a little bit and uh, to like a minus 29. See how it darkens it up just a little bit. I don't want to go too crazy there. So I'm going to drag it to minus 29. And there it is. Now here's the before that adjustment. And here's the after. I just think it kind of balances everything out. Well, after three textures and a couple color adjustments, we end up with this image. We started out with this and we end up with this. And I'm really happy with this image that I like to call entangled. So if you're happy with it, all we need to do at this point is come up to either file and save the project as if you started out in Topaz Studio 2. Even if you start out in Photoshop, you can still save your project there, which is a really cool thing. So you can do that. Or in my case, I started out in Photoshop, so I'm just going to click Accept, and that'll send me right back into Photoshop. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this one. I love making art, and I love Topaz Studio, too, for making art. It really helps me to get my creative juices flowing. Again, I call this one Entangled. It's... Uh, captured in a bunch of cosmic soup <laughs> okay so there you go try that uh that texture out i think you'll find it it's you can really use it and it's it's kind of a fun one sorry i don't have the uh, download for you on this one this isn't my own image here so I, I generally don't give you those but i give you stock images but i wanted to work on this image today hey if you enjoyed this tutorial today please give it a like share it with your friends if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel please subscribe Click that bell notification icon, then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing.